What up, what up? Welcome back to another tutorial series. And in this one, we're gonna be learning Ethereum. So question number one, what the heck is Ethereum? All right, good question. So Ethereum is a whole new way to both create and transfer value that's open to anyone in the world. Now, more technically, Ethereum is a decentralized computer network that executes programs called smart contracts. Now, through the use of these smart contracts, developers can do many things, but one of the more interesting and probably well-known is creating many different types of digital assets. These include digital artwork and collectibles. Now, these are typically what people think of whenever they hear the term NFT, but there's actually a lot more to NFTs than just art, as we're gonna be seeing later on. Aside from those, Another popular type of digital asset is in-game items. And these may include things like skins or weapons, basically anything that you could buy in an in-game economy. And some of the more interesting but lesser known use cases are actually digital representations of real world items. And these may include things like tickets to some real world concert or event or movie perhaps, or even a deed to a house or a car. And believe it or not, you can actually even create your very own virtual currency. And the use cases for that are really up to your imagination. Smart contracts are also used to instruct the network how to assign ownership of these assets. For example, there could be a game that could use smart contracts to transfer ownership of rare items to players who completed a quest or something along those lines. So for example, if this user completed a quest, Maybe there would be a pool of rare items and this user would get this uh, helmet, I guess it is. And this uh, other user, let's give him this sword. That's pretty cool. So something along those lines. Now there are also many other use cases for smart contracts, but we'll get into those later on in the course. Now combining these smart contracts with user interfaces, developers can create a variety of dApps. And dApp just stands for decentralized app. And they can include things like marketplaces, exchanges, games, and so on. So dApps are just smart contracts plus a user interface. So what are the technological benefits of decentralized apps or dApps as these young whippersnappers call them? So the technological benefits are actually very closely related to the overall Ethereum architecture as a whole. And by that, I mean, for one, there's zero downtime. And that's because on a peer-to-peer -peer network, as we see here, there is no single point of failure. Another benefit is privacy. Developers and users don't need to provide their real world identity to either build these dApps or interact with them. So that's another plus. And also they're censorship resistant. By that, I mean that no single entity on the Ethereum network could ever block users from creating or using these dApps and that is also because this network is indeed open to anyone in the world. So the Ethereum network as a whole is very open, transparent, and verifiable. And that's because every node in this network, and we're gonna see exactly how this happens later on, but every node in this network is essentially responsible for keeping an eye on each other and making sure that there's no cheating or tomfoolery going on. Now, another common question that people have, especially when they're first starting to learn about Ethereum, is how is Ethereum different than Bitcoin? So Ethereum and Bitcoin both do use a blockchain architecture, and we're gonna be getting into the details of what all that means later on. But for now, I do wanna point out that Ethereum's primary use case is not just to be a digital currency like Bitcoin. It's more so to offer value and utility through a growing network of dApps. Now with that, I would like to say that in this course, what we're going to be doing is going over some core concepts regarding Ethereum. And I also wanna mention that this course is mostly geared to developers. However, it is useful for anyone who's just interested in learning more about Ethereum for whatever reason. And I just wanna point this out because specifically, this is not a course on trading or investment advice. It's more for people who are interested in the Ethereum technology or who wanna learn how to build on the Ethereum network. Now, the last thing that I wanna mention is that if anyone has any questions throughout this course, then feel free to join our Discord by going to our website, thenewboston.com. And it's here at the moment under resources. If you go to join the community, 
then you can click on a link to our Discord. And by the way, I'm thinking of adding a category on the left for either crypto or blockchain. So by the time you all join, uh, just keep an eye out for that. But either way, our Discord community is awesome. It's probably your best bet for any questions. We have a super helpful community and pretty fun too, actually. So um, anyways, getting kind of sidetracked here. Another resource is our Reddit. So that's reddit.com slash r slash the new Boston. Feel free to join this, ask any questions uh, about Ethereum, suggestions, feedback, so on and so forth. And last but not least, how can I forget the Ethereum subreddit? So uh, this, of course, for obvious reasons, is one of the best resources for um, Ethereum. Any questions, uh, feel free to ask here. And a lot of people there, I believe, how many is it? 1.2 million right now. So somewhere in these communities, someone is gonna be able to help out any questions that you have. So yeah, uh, on that note, I am pretty pumped up, looking forward to this entire series. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next video.